Today we look at the all NBA teams from every decade, the best starting five from every decade if we had to make one, and we'll see who the MVP from each one was. And we start with the 60s with Oscar Robertson, Jerry West, Elgin Baylor, Bob Pettit, and Bill Russell. A lot of familiar names but nobody you've ever actually seen play, but from everything we know we could assume that this would be an all time dominant lineup. The backcourt of Oscar and Jerry would be a lead. Robertson was dominant in every aspect of the game while Jerry was not only one of the top offensive players of the 60s but in general in NBA history. Elgin Baylor was unstoppable at his peak and Bob Pettit was a stretch four who was good enough offensively to make up for Russell's lack of scoring ability. The only thing though is that none of these guys actually won any championships in the 60s, and that's because Bill Russell won 9 out of the 10 of them, which is why he easily took this spot for me in place of Will Chamberlain. Personally, Will played a lot better, he was like Bill on defense while being a monster offensively, but when you win 90% of the championships in a decade, there's no choice. And because of his winning ability and leadership, we can only assume that if he had been playing with this team, he would have easily made a clean sweep and won all 10 that year. I mean, with this talent compared to who he originally had, Bill Russell and these guys might have never actually lost a game. Not a ton of defenders, but again, Bill Russell has that whole side covered, while everyone else could focus on scoring. And if we're talking about their whole career, these four guys only have three titles between them, so it just seems like Bill Russell's the perfect complement to them in every way. They couldn't win on their own, so the four-time MVP would round things out nicely, and for that reason, it's why Bill Russell is easily the MVP of the 60s as a whole. For the 70s, we have Walt Frazier, Pete Maravich, John Havlicek, Elvin Hayes, and Kareem. And with these guys, we take a step back in terms of name power with them because they're slightly less popular than some of the all-time greats from the 60s. And in my opinion, they're slightly less skilled than the previous lineup too. But it still works because this team gave us 6 out of the 10 championships from the 70s. And in it, we have Kareem from his rookie season, then throughout basically his entire prime. Pete Maravich was a scorer similar to Jerry West. They could both shoot and score with the ease. And Pete averaged 31 a game one year without 3-pointers. Havlicek was like the 70s Scottie Pippen, except Hondo averaged 29 a game his best year in 1971. While Elvin Hayes was more of a traditional big man that could put up 28 and 16 type of numbers. And Frazier wasn't the greatest offensively, but he was a leader and would definitely take this team to the next level. And having these guys all together really gives them a full lineup with no weaknesses. Each guy excels in a different space. They aren't really lacking in any one category, so I think they'd be just as dominant as you could imagine. And as for the MVP of the decade, Karimi easily takes this one. Now in the 1980s is when things really start to heat up, and it's not even fair anymore. Because you have Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, and Kareem. Within the 1980s, they have 25 All-NBA First Teams, 8 NBA Championships, and 8 MVPs between the 5 of them. And these are the 5 guys that ran the league back then. It was Magic and Bird who were debated as the 2 GOATs of the NBA, then MJ came in and started to take that title, so you have 3 guys that were thought to be the GOAT all on one team. Not even to mention we get to include Magic's right hand man in Kareem, and Larry Bird's number 2 with Kevin McHale. So you have not only 5 of the league's best players over the last 10 year span, but you also have 2 of the best duos in the entire league that made up 2 of the best teams at the same time. And as a team they'd fit flawlessly. Now at this time Jordan still hadn't won any championships, so he wouldn't necessarily necessarily be the leader, because that would be everyone else and he'd be the young guy. But he would be the team's go-to scorer since he averaged 37 a game in 1987. Magic would obviously be the facilitator, Bird would be the team's shooter, Mikhail would probably spend most of his focus being the team's go-to defender given the fact that he did make the all-defensive first team three times between 86 and 88, while Kareem would be the veteran and lead the front court. And the MVP of this lineup is tough between Magic and Larry Bird, but seeing how Magic won five titles and three MVPs in the 80s alone, it's gotta go to him. And this is arguably the best lineup we could possibly make in the best lineup of the video. Maybe not, maybe someone still beats them out, so let's keep going and find out. I mean, the 90s cuts things close, with John Stockton, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Karl Malone, and Hakeem. And it's similar because it gives us two top duels in the league for that decade combined with another all-time great. We have the greatest of all time in his prime, the greatest duo of all time, and two guys who may take second on that all-time duo list, while having Hakeem at center, who could do it all. And just between the three of these guys, it gives us seven out of the 10 NBA titles from the 90s. The Jazz and the Bulls met twice in the NBA Finals, and now for them to join up gives us similar vibes to Kevin Durant on the Warriors. I couldn't even imagine how good this team would be from taking an all-time great passer, two all-time great scorers, an all-time defender, and an all-time overall player and putting them all together in one lineup. Not even to mention four out of the five of these guys were some of, if not the best players in the league at their position on defense. Jordan never played with an actual top-tier big man, so having Malone and Hakeem down low would completely change his game and open up so many opportunities for him. And Stockton and Malone never played with another elite scorer or defender, so yeah, they just casually add the greatest of all time as the third option to their team. And all of that's not even to mention how Hakeem Olajuwon only played with three other all-stars during his entire career, so this would be like a dream for him. And the MVP of this decade was obviously Michael Jordan. For the 2000s, things get interesting with Allen Iverson, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Tim Duncan, and Shaq. So what sticks out here is that with the base of this team, we start with the duo of Kobe and Shaq, and there may be no better compliment to O'Neal than one Tim Duncan. You combine the loud, playful, dominant powerhouse Shaq with Tim who was quiet, could spread the floor, had a winning mentality, and a skill set that would kind of perfectly complement Shaq. It's weird how much of opposites they were 
were out on the court, but how well they'd actually work together side by side if you think about it. And to this squad, you'd add LeBron James, who at the time in all of the 2000s, for the most part was a player built off of pure athleticism. Don't get me wrong, he had skill, but not enough of it back then. Like most young players, it was still early in his career, so he was able to get by just by his speed and ability to drive past everyone and dunk on them, which was why he had limited success in the playoffs. So putting him with all these other guys would make up for his weaknesses and be the perfect scenario. He'd get to just play his game and play to his strengths, while everyone else would be able to hide his lack of shooting ability. And top that off with Allen Iverson at point guard, and you have yourself a super team. I am a little skeptical though. Iverson, Kobe, and a young LeBron around the perimeter really limits things in how they could stretch the floor. None of those guys were reliable from three back then, and Tim Duncan was only mid-range, so it'd be tough. But honestly, again, threes weren't as important in the 2000s, but I think they'd managed just fine. The MVP of the decade in the grand scheme of things would probably go to Kobe Bryant, who won five titles between 2000 and 2010, made the all-defensive first team eight times, and was a two-time scoring champ and one-time MVP. Then here comes the 2010s, where we have Steph Curry, James Harden, LeBron James, Giannis, and Dwight Howard. There's really not much debate needed for placing any of these players in these spots, but I will mention that at one point, Klay Thompson and James Harden were debated about who was the better shooting guard, and Klay did help the Warriors to three championships, so it was a little tough not including him here. But when you look at personal success, James takes it, because there's a lot to be said about leading your team instead of being a second option. I mean, plus in these 10 years, Klay only made the All-NBA third team twice, as opposed to Harden who made it six times and won an MVP, so really it wasn't too hard of a choice. Then the other debate would be putting Giannis over Tim Duncan, and with them, you'd have more offense in the backcourt than you'd know what to do with. So I mean, that alone right there would be good enough. But then, oh yeah, you add in the second greatest player of all time. Who I have to add fits in perfectly with his all-around game right in the middle of all this offensive defense. As for the decade's MVP, I gotta give a co-MVP here to Steph and LeBron James. Both have dominated that span in time. James submitted himself as a top two player, and Steph changed basketball, so I think it's only right. And finally, we're at this decade, the 2020s. We're only two years into it, so it's hard to say exactly how things will turn out. It's hard to say who will end the decade on top. Will Trey Young take over? Could it be John Moran? Luka Doncic, like everyone at one point believed? Or could LeBron hold on for eight more years and take this whole thing over? Probably not. All we can do now, though, is see who's been the best up until this point, from 2020 until right now. And I think we gotta give those spots to Steph Curry, James Harden, Kevin Durant, Giannis, and Nikola Jokic. I mean, for Curry, Harden, Giannis, and Joker, there are no brainers and no arguments need to be said. Some may argue, though, that over the last two years, LeBron James still deserves the spot. But honestly, Kevin's been slightly better. They've played a similar amount of games, and KD's in his prime right now. LeBron's playing like he still is, but given all the circumstances, I still have Kevin with a slight advantage for this one. And now as a team, these five guys are five all-time greats. Have floor spacing, offense, defense, passing, everything, they have it all. With Giannis's inability to shoot and Jokic's ability to shoot, I think they'd be nice compliments to each other, and with how Harden proved he could change his game on offense, while with the Nets, there would be no problems pairing him with Steph Curry in the backcourt. It really is almost a flawless lineup, and the MVP up until this point so far has to be Giannis, just based off of how well he's played and the fact that we've only crowned one NBA champion so far this decade, and it's his. So it made it an easy choice. Don't forget to like the video, comment any other starting five videos you'd like to see in the future, and I'm out.